a really exciting time for young folks, for old folks, for, for everyone. And one of the most interesting things is that really for the first time in modern history, past the Industrial Revolution and every other technological revolution that's been around, it's not the physical laborers, the, the farmers, the factory workers who are being displaced, but it's the white collar workers, the knowledge workers, the engineers, lawyers, doctors, teachers. And for a lot of the folks in this room, that's really scary. That's really concerning. What are we all going to do? As AI becomes increasingly smart and it becomes the next super intelligence that rules us all, can we trust it to take all over our jobs? to be a better doctor so that I can go into the doctor's office and trust whatever diagnosis it gives me? Can AI, is, can AI not be biased? Can it be neutral? And Can it represent everyone's opinions, not just the views and the beliefs of people in a small building in San Francisco? These are really, really big questions. And for any of you who have used ChatGBT, you know just how problematic and, and wrong it can be. In a lot of cases, it's extremely smart. In a lot of cases, it doesn't know how to do basic arithmetic, and it can be extremely biased. And so with that being said, I think it's really important that we understand what is the future of this technology going to be, and how is it going to affect us? In the next couple of minutes, I'm going to share my thought process and the guidelines and thinkings that some of the biggest AI labs around the world take when it comes to this issue. And it starts really with learning. As Peter mentioned, I'm a student at Harvard myself. I grew up in Palo Alto, um, really loved AI uh, from a young age in high school and started building autonomous vehicle software uh, from a very young age, trying to make sure that the self-driving cars that we built wouldn't run over pedestrians and that they'd be safe when released into the real world. I've gone to college now, moved out here to San Francisco a couple months ago, and we're really excited that we're about to work with OpenAI and partner with them to help them build safer and smarter AI that can interact with humans in the real world in a safe way. Now, let's talk about how AI learns, and it's something called reinforcement learning. What that involves is a very similar process to how we as humans learn today, which is that as students and as babies and children in the classroom, we learn what's right and what's wrong, how to solve a problem correctly versus incorrectly. And from that, our parents and teachers give us a reward, either a positive or a negative reward based on how we did. That same dynamic and process is how we train AI today, it's called reinforcement learning. We give them a positive signal when they do well and they solve a problem correctly, and we give them a negative signal whenever they're biased or racist, et cetera. That's a really important dynamic because right now with the problematic chat GBT that we have, AI is still just a teenager. It's still learning how to be a better doctor and engineer. And the truth and the way we go forward and make this a safer technology that we can all use is by collectively, all of us, you, me, everyone in this room and everyone around the world collectively shaping and using their opinions and their preferences and their knowledge to all contribute and teach AI how to be a better person in today's world. That means that for the future of jobs, what we'll all be doing in five or 10 years is that increasingly we're going to be working with AI in your job, in my job, in everyone's job, not just as a tool, but we're also going to be ourselves teaching it when it's doing a good job, when it's doing a bad job, and all that data will teach it how to become the best doctor, the best engineer, the best lawyer, the best global citizen of this new future world. And so I hope if there's any one takeaway you take away, it's that we're all in this together. And it's not just the AI labs that are going to shape this future. It's going to be on every one of us to make sure that when AI does go into the doctor's office or does become your next lawyer, that it is doing a good job. And we all need to collectively give our input, give our opinion to make sure that AI is a safe and smart citizen of the future. Thank you.